So, now it is uh, time to do another experiment based on uh, adsorption mechanism and that is column chromatography. Again we will be separating the mixture of uh, some compounds you can say and this time we will turn to the nature. We will go to the garden outside and collect some flowers and leaves and you know that colorful pigments are present in leaves, leaves and flowers oh. all around us and we will try to separate these pigments in the laboratory today. I hope you will be finding this one also very very interesting one. Yes. So, before we do that column chromatography for separation, we have to prepare the column and prepare the extracts of the pigments we have to separate. Right? So, we will take some flowers and leaves from the garden and do the preparation part first. So, we have collected some flowers and leaves from the plants and then we want to extract the pigments from them first of all and then from these pigments we will separate the compounds. Here you can see that we have taken these green leaves, chopped them in small pieces and then added some alcohol to it and you can see that the green colored pigments have come out very nicely after keeping for some time in the solvent which is the alcohol we have taken. Similarly, from this china rose petals, again we have taken these petals and then chopped them finely, added some alcohol, kept that mixture for some time so that the color comes out from the petals into the solvent. Again we have taken solvent as ethanol. Similarly, for these yellow flowers, again we wanted to have extract of the pigments present in these petals. We took the petals, chopped them into small pieces, added some alcohol and then made the pigments to come out after keeping them for a little while. You can see that yellow color is there in the liquid part that is the extract and solid remains of the petals are there in the both these beakers and the colors have really vanished from the solid part and came into the extract. So, we have extracts from green leaves, china rose petals and a yellow colored flower. What we have done after that, that we have taken the extracts from all these three into these test tubes. So, these are our samples in which mixture of pigments are there and we will be taking for column chromatography the separation of pigments present in chlorophyll that is in this green color test tube the sample we have will be using this sample to be separated using this column here. So, after taking this test tube out from here we will use this sample for column chromatography and see what pigments we get after separation from this green colored extract. So, let us prepare the column first. For column chromatography, we have taken a glass column. You can see here it has a stopcock at the bottom and we have mounted it on a stand using this clamp and I have placed a beaker down there to collect the mobile face or the solvent which we will be using. I have put a funnel here to put the solvent as well as the silica gel which is to be uh, settled here and forming a column here. We will use enough silica gel so that it forms a column of this much length and here you can see there is a small padding already there built in so that the silica gel which we will be adding from the top does not flow out from this exit tube. right? So, what we will do first? We will add a small amount of solvent here and open this stopcock. We want to run this liquid out so that any air which is present in this part of the column gets expelled. Right? I will just close this tap and add some more solvent from this tube using this funnel. So, enough solvent is now there. 
what we will do next is we will take now the stationary phase how to add this stationary phase which is silica gel in this case we are using we can also use alumina which is shown here so two adsorbents which are commonly used are silica gel or alumina, alumina depending upon whether the compound is acidic basic or neutral in nature alumina is used in very very special kinds of compounds most of the compounds we use silica gel for separation so i am taking little silica gel here and i want to have a height of half of this column for this silica gel what i will do is i will just wet this silica gel first by adding some amount of the same mobile phase or the solvent which i have taken here now this is little wet you can see i will add this from the top from this funnel to this column you can see it has started settling down yes, yes ma'am right we will just shake it again pour through the funnel and allow it to settle i'll drain out some solvent from here you can clearly see silica gel is now settling here little more silica gel can be added which is still there in the beaker with me i'll add some more mobile face and do what i had done earlier here again you can see it is settling down i'll drain out some solvent so that it easily settles down here i'll close the stock cock and take this funnel out now we will take this green colored extract from the leaves of the plant and make a slurry of it we have taken some uh, silica gel in this china dish i will add this extract and slowly stir that mixture very good color i am getting i'll add some more silica gel and keep this stirring so that whatever the solvent is there it evaporates and we get a uniform mixture that is uniform adsorption of the contents on the silica gel you see it should be homogeneous in a sense that colors should not appear to be different in different regions so slowly it is getting dried and the contents are getting adsorbed on the silica gel which is the stationary phase you will see that on drying it will get little lighter in color let the solvent completely evaporate you will feel that the texture also will look like to be a little different when it is completely dry it is almost dry i'll just stir it a little more i'll take this slurry out on a paper now we will take this dried slurry and put that in the column through this funnel very slowly i'll pour see it has settled on the 
wet slurry already present in the column. Now we will slowly add some solvent from the top and simultaneously also open this top cock. Now this mobile face is carrying along with it certain pigments which have started separating. Now you can see light yellow colored pigment is there. I will collect it in a separate beaker. Change this beaker here. And keep on adding the solvent because the column should not run dry. Air should not enter because that will affect the separation. So we have to keep a watch on the upper end of the column as well that it should not dry as well as the colors start separating in different containers. So this is a separate container here, beaker is there, I have collected this yellow colored pigment here and now you can see that the column is again almost colorless here and green pigments are now at the top of the column. So I will do again addition of some more solvent and again change the container here. So I am taking this beaker containing the yellow pigment which has been completely collected in this beaker, taking out this beaker and I am replacing now a new container, new beaker and opening the stopcock again and running the column. You can see here now the green color has come a little down and as we run the column, mobile face will slowly take along with it the pigments of green color also. So we will start operating the column again by opening the stopcock like this and I will keep on adding the solvent from the top because the column should not run dry. So we will keep observing this area where the pigments are being separated. Here you see that this green color of the leaves do have many pigments. It is not just single chlorophyll. There are many pigments. This light yellow pigment which we have already collected are carotenes. This green band is now traveling downwards and above that again there is a yellow band you can see still on the top. Again this green colored pigment which is chlorophyll is also uh, not a single compound but it contains both chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B which are little different in structure. Both of them are light and dark green colored pigments and they also separate like this through the column. So we will again change the container when this green band will be separating through this mobile face and coming down in the collecting beaker. Now the band is now a little more nearer the bottom and in few minutes, one or two minutes it will be coming down through this nozzle to the container. Now it is quite near the bottom so it is the time to change the container. I will close this nozzle and remove this container and replace it with another container and in which I would like to collect this green part of the pigments. I will open the nozzle again. And see carefully how this dark green band will first pass out from the bottom. You can see a light green color is coming in the beaker now. I will keep on adding solvent in small portions. You see very clearly dark green band has almost half of it has passed through. Very less portion of dark green band is still there. We will collect 
the same fraction again in this beaker continue adding in that only and after the green band has completely been eluted we will change the container again now this dark green band has almost completely passed into this beaker so I will close the cock again here and then take this beaker out this green colored solution in the beaker here at number 2 this was first fraction this is second fraction and again I will now replace the container third container to collect this light green colored pigment which is still there in the column we will add little more solvent from the top and open the stopcock now this light greenish yellow pigment which is there will start collecting in the third beaker you can see here very light color has started coming in the beaker you can see light green pigment being eluted in this beaker with the mobile face and there is sufficient amount of this pigment and we will keep on adding the solvent from the top and keep on collecting the pigment dissolved in the mobile face down in this container you can see the color is yellowish green and it is different from the first as well as the second fraction this is the third fraction of the pigments being separated from this green mixture extracted from the green leaf now this is almost about till this height this pigment is there you can see very very light green color is still there in the column still some more solvent should be added and on the top you see that there is a little transparent area that means that till this place again there is this pigment is present and we will keep on collecting till this band totally moves down to this place I'll just stop this column and change the container down at the bottom I'm keeping this as fraction third here so I am having these three fractions here first fraction second fraction and third fraction which have been eluted from this column I will now transfer them to three separate china dishes so that the solvent present in them gets evaporated. After this I will go back to the column again and run the column. Now I am placing a new beaker to collect the another fraction I will open the stopcock here and after that I will put some solvent from the top you can see this light green band is traveling down and there is a transparent portion above that light green band we will collect this portion light green portion completely color is visible because of some tarry materials but no pigment is there and the solution which is coming out here is colorless so this means that almost all the pigments have already been eluted by the column and not much colored compounds are present we will continue a little more and see if something else at the top which seems to be a yellow pigment is coming down yes there is something at the top 
yellowish pigment is still there after this light transparent green band which has started moving down so when this light color band finishes and completely passes into this fraction we will collect this band which is darker in color in a separate beaker this light green band is almost finished and we will stop the column here and change the container this is the fourth fraction i am keeping it here i am replacing a new beaker here to collect the rest of the colored pigment which is present as a yellow band you can see greenish yellow dark color band is still there i'll add some more solvent it has started coming out you can see greenish yellow color in the beaker very clear top white silica gel now you are able to see because all the pigments i have now almost passed to the lower portion of the column almost the color has come down in the beaker very very light color you can see in the column still we will still add some more solvent and elute whatever is the remaining portion in the column now the column seems to be almost colorless almost all the pigments which were there in the green extract have been separated and we will stop the column now i'll close this stopcock put this fifth fraction here in the sequence like this so you can see here that we have collected five fractions from this column this is the first fraction starting from here which is light orangish in color this is darker green fraction which was second fraction we eluted from the column and this is the third fraction which is light yellowish green in color this was the third fraction we collected this is the fourth fraction which is almost colorless which was very colored and yellowish band which appeared last in the column was collected and this is the fifth fraction so we will leave all these five fractions 1 2 3 4 and 5 for a while so that the solvent present in them dries and we get the concentrated pigments here had the amount of solvents been very large it is advisable to collect the solvent back by distillation and get the fraction collected in the distillation flask but since the amount is not very much we can allow this to evaporate and then get the concentrated form of the pigment present in the green part of the extract of the green leaves so after 3 hours let us see what has happened exactly this is sample number 1 which was light pale colored yellowish in nature almost the solvent has evaporated and you can see the separated pigment here this was a dark colored green band which we eluted it has also got concentrated and more likely these are the chlorophyll pigments here and this is a dark pigment here and this was also a lighter shade pigment solvent has evaporated lighter yellow you can see it is still there color is there but solvent has evaporated a lot and here because the surface area was lesser it has evaporated to a much lesser extent and this fifth and the last fraction also which was yellow colored in nature after concentration this will also give a very good yellow color once the solvent is removed from it though some has evaporated but more solvent can be evaporated from here and then we will be getting the final concentrated yellow colored pigment here also so very clear separation has occurred first pigment light yellow dark green again yellowish green no color in this and finally the yellow colored pigment so these were the separations we were able to achieve by column chromatography so you can see here that it's not only the single compound that green extraction but it is a mixture of at least four colored compounds we have here so each one of these can be tested for its rf value and 
we can compare the obtained RF values with the known RF values of uh, you can say with carotenes, with chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B and xanthophylls. These are the major pigments present in the green part of the green leaves. So, four pigments we are clearly able to separate here which can be identified by comparing their RF values with the RF values of the known samples. So, this is how today we have separated various colored pigments from the green part of the leaves by extracting the leaves uh, in alcohol and then passing that extract through this column where we took silica gel for the column as a stationary phase and we added the mobile phase from the top and we kept on eluting the different fractions according to their colors which were visible as different bands in the column. I hope you have found this experiment also very very interesting as were the earlier ones on the chromatography and you have a very clear idea about the different forms in which chromatography can be very very useful to us. It is a simple technique, easy technique and can be used to get the pure compounds from very very small amounts of the compounds available. What about you Satinder? Ma'am in column chromatography we had uh, first taken a column uh, with a solid stationary phase silica gel taken into it and then ma'am we had prepared the slurry of the green extract uh, taken from the leaves Good. that uh, green parts of the plants right. and uh, we uh, load these uh, green uh, extract uh, and uh, slurry of the green extract into the column right and, and uh, ma'am we yeah. kept pouring the solvent into the column and then different bands of the components of mixture were clearly visible yeah we were able to observe them and ma'am we separated them into different containers and yeah. ma'am later on you can identify them yeah and these are right in front of you yes. right yes, so then there you can see yes ma Shelja, you can also see all the five fractions we have collected yes. from the green colored extracts and we normally say that green pigments are present in the Plant. plant which are chlorophylls, chlorophylls right and in addition to chlorophylls you have carotenes also xanthophylls yes, and right. other pigments depending upon the plant and the time of collection in which the sample has been taken so this green color in fact is a mixture of many pigments, many pigments yes, and yes. we were able to separate uh, four of them here fourth one is actually almost colorless here so no much pigment is present there but good separation of four pigments we were able to achieve right now you can also appreciate that we have performed all these experiments of chromatography using a micro scale kit so the advantages of the micro scale kit were to use lesser amount of solvents smaller apparatus have the cheaper kind of a apparatus when we operate at a smaller scale cost also reduce and at the same time these experiments are environment friendly also because we are disposing of lesser amounts of chemicals in the environment ultimately. So, these are few benefits of the micro scale kit. I hope that whatever experiments you will do in your next sessions also, you will be using this kit to perform those experiments. Till then, goodbye. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. Ma